It's one of those towns where everybody knows everybody. And in Lone Oak, most everybody knew Jack Walls. Jack was friends with all these parents of these kids. He grew up with them. He'd been there in Lone Oak all his life. Walls was a family man. He had a wife, three daughters. He was the son of a judge, and he was a Boy Scout leader. Heath Stocks was in his troop. It was an activity that uh, we were supposed to learn certain things that were supposed to teach you to be your best and, you know, to strive for things. And uh, uh, we're supposed to do, it's supposed to teach you a lot of things, not, not the things that we learned, that's for sure. Stock says parents, including his own, trusted Walls, but behind their backs, he was raping children of their innocence. You have a child who's never had any kind of dealings with a sexual, anything sexual, and then uh, to take something that feels good, yet uh, the child's drunk, and he, feel the, he or she feels the pleasure, like I felt the pleasure, but at the same time, you know, it just... It didn't seem right. All right, thank you, sir. Walls was a child molester, many of his scouts his victims, but none responded to him like Stocks. Walls became a father to him, and Stocks kept his secret. You know how kids can be. And uh, is everybody going to think I'm, I'm gay? Uh, uh, why didn't I step forward and say anything sooner? You know, did I, did I really enjoy it because I didn't tell anybody? But not everyone in the group would be loyal. In 1992, one of the scouts would try to stop Walls. But fellow scouts turned against the accuser, and Walls escaped trouble. Here's the person that was hurting us the most, but it was, it was all we had, so we defended him. Walls was kicked out of the Boy Scouts, but the abuse continued. By 1997, Stocks had had enough. I broke down and I told my mom and sister what had been going on. And, uh, you know, it's pretty devastating. Stocks spiraled out of control. He exploded. That rage, rage just built up inside of me. I don't know. I mean, just being so angry. I don't know. This is everything. The time I realized what happened, they were all laying in the floor. They were all gone. The bodies of his mother, Barbara, father, Joe, and sister, Heather, were found on their kitchen floor. Stocks had shot them to death. I realized I'd made a terrible mistake. Uh, I knew I, need, I deserved to pay for that mistake. But he wouldn't tell why he did it. Keith, are you sorry for what you did? Get back, get back. Anything you'd like to say? What's bottled up inside? Why did you kill your parents? Until Walls himself went sorry? on trial for rape in 98. Mr. Walls, you want to say anything? Not at this time. If I'd never met Jack, I can tell you with all honesty and uh, I believe it with all my heart. My family would be alive today. So Jack told you to kill your parents? Jack said I'd create a problem and solve that problem. For the past seven years, he's been locked up. But Heath Stocks no longer keeps his vow of silence. I don't think people can really understand how much misery and pain that I feel for what happened because... When he was 20 years old, Stocks killed his family, his father, mother, and 18-year-old sister. To get down here and to wake up every day and to... Uh, I had to face that my family's gone. You know, that's, uh, that's been rough. But Stock says he didn't no, murder didn't. alone. It's a control thing. I think that was the whole power, you know, to get away with whatever he could get away with and, and enjoy it. And uh, the man was sick. 
It really was. That man was Jack Walls. Walls, you want to say anything? Not at this time. Stocks' story begins and tragically ends here in Lone Oak, a town of about 5,000, a town that unknowingly had a deep, dark secret. They were looking for a neon sign, hey, I'm being abused, hey, I need your help, uh, please, you know, help me. It's, it's not like that. I mean, Stock says his nightmare began with Boy Scout Troop 103. That's where he met Walls, the scoutmaster. You had your own little special campouts, and he brought alcohol and the pornography out there, and we'd all get drunk, sit around a campfire, and uh, that could get us talking. Talking, Stock says, about their families. He found out which kids had the most need or want for attention, who were having problems at home. Uh, the dad kind of uh, rough on them. Uh, they're not, the parents not have a lot of time, and a lot of times the parents that didn't have time, they had trust their kids with Jack. But what parents didn't know, that deep dark secret, was that Walls was a child molester. And so you take a kid and uh, get him drunk, and uh, you can pretty much have your way. And, uh, <sighs> Stock says Walls handpicked his favorites, made them part of an elite group. Deep in the woods is where Stock says Walls would turn them into his victims. Jack uh, touched me and formed oil on me and then made me perform oil on him. Uh, after that, uh, when we had these campouts, sometimes it was like that. Uh, sometimes he had the boys doing things to each other. Sometimes uh, the boys wouldn't even be sober and he would do things to them. Including, Stock says, teach them how to kill. He'd help me get a, uh, uh, a police issue sniping rifle. Uh, I was supposed to be his little hit man. I was supposed to be his little hired assassin. Stock says he became wrapped up in the relationship. He called me, he son and I called him father. On January 17th, 1997, Stocks would prove his loyalty. Jack always had this thing about, you know, I don't know, I don't know why he did this, but it was uh, something he said. Is if you have a problem and you can't solve it, you kill it. That problem, Stocks says, became his own family. Back in 97, you decide to tell the secret. Who do you tell and what happens? <sighs> I broke down and I told my mom and sister. That deep dark secret of abuse was no longer a secret anymore. I broke down and told Jack what I'd done. <laughs> and Jack just, I remember him, him looking at me and said I betrayed him. He told me I created a problem. I need to fix it. So I knew what he meant. I cannot, I cannot tell you, I can't even tell you who died first. I know they were shot a bunch. When those people died, from that moment on, any good that those people could have done, I stopped from happening. And to be able to carry that on my shoulders, oh, that's a, uh, that's rough because uh, mm. but stock says he had to protect the man he called dad at the time I believed I, I, I killed my family to protect my father the only friend that I had the only person that I had Stock says he thought Walls was devoted to him as well. Jack was one of the first ones to come see me in county jail. Uh, Jack was one of the first people to house set in my house after happened what happened. So nobody break in the house. That's what, that's what his excuse was. Uh, and he told me to be quiet. He come up and see me and said, you, you should be quiet, I'm going to help you. Keith, are you sorry for what you did? Even after pleading guilty to three counts of capital murder in 97, Stocks never told the courts about Walls. I was 
I was misled all that time. But eventually, the abuse came out, and in 1998, Walls was convicted on five counts of rape. The sixth count, the one involving Stocks, Walls pleaded no contest. Stocks was brought in for the trial, and it was then, a year after his murder conviction, that he revealed what he says triggered him to kill. He had that power. He had that control. Walls declined our request for an interview, but has said before he did not have any involvement in the murders. As for Heath Stocks... I know there's so much pain and so much agony I've caused so many people, but uh, in seven years, time never changes that. Now that I realize that was wrong, I want to have a chance to start over. Ironically, the man that consumed his life, Stocks says he hardly thinks about now. He only thinks about what could have been. That my family was alive, even if they had to be here. Well, if I could, if I could make that wish, and they could bring back. I'd have no problem staying in prison the rest of my life. I could do it. I would.